The discovery of oil in Nigeria dated back to 1956 at Oloibiri in the Niger Delta after almost half a century of exploration. This discovery was made by Shell BP at the time the sole concessionaire Nigeria joined the ranks of oil producing nations in 1958 when its first oil field came on stream producing 5,100 BPD. By 1960, exploration rights in onshore and offshore areas adjoining the Niger Delta were extended to other foreign companies. In 1965, the EA field was discovered by Shell in shallow water southeast of Wari. The end of the Nigerian civil war in 1970 coincided with a rise in the world oil price and the nation was able to reap instant riches from its oil production. Nigeria joined the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, in 1971, while it established Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, in 1977. The state-owned and controlled company is a major player in both the upstream and the downstream sectors of the industry. With its humongous reserves, the country had attained a production level of over 2 million barrels of crude oil a day by the late 60s and early 70s, with the NNPC playing a pivotal role in the sector on behalf of the country. Though envisioned to grow and operate like its counterparts the world over, like Aramco and Petrobras, the oil behemoth, which is saddled with the core responsibility of harnessing Nigeria's oil and gas reserves for sustainable national development, has had its growth stunted by myriads of factors. The corporation was responsible for crude oil exploration, production, distribution, and marketing and had contributed over 40% of the country's gross domestic product GDP while being responsible for more than 76% of the reserve of the federal government over the years. But then, as much as it contributed to the nation's economy significantly since its establishment in 1977, its own growth had been stunted by its own problematic contradictions such as lack of transparency, non-accountability, imprudent management of funds accruing from oil sales, insider abuses, lack of optimal productivity, entrenched culture of wastefulness among other self-inflated afflictions. Successive administration in both the country and the corporation that have been desirous of improving the fortune of the NNPC have introduced several stopgap measures aimed at arresting the downward trend in not just the dwindling accruals to the nation's coffers from the sector but the lack of growth of the corporation itself. Thus, the ascendancy of Mele Kolokiari as the 19th Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, was indeed a watershed in the history of the oil behemoth. The Nigerian geologists and crude oil marketer with over three decades experience in the industry was born on the 8th of January 1965. He attended Government Community Secondary School, Biu, Bornu State, before proceeding to the University of Meduguri where he graduated in 1987 with a Bachelor of Science degree in Geology and Earth Science. He did his NYSC as a well site engineer with the Directorate of Foods, Roads and Rural Infrastructure, DFRI, between 1987 and 1988. He worked with the Nigerian Geological Survey Agency as a field geologist between 1988 and 1991. He later joined the services of the Integrated Data Services Limited, where he worked as a seismic data processing geophysicist in the data processing department. In 1998, Mr. Kiari was appointed the Exploration Geophysicist Production Sharing Contract, PSC, 
of the National Petroleum Investment Management Service, NAPIMS, until 2004 when he became Abuja Operations Manager of NAPIMS. In 2006, he was appointed Supervisor, the Crude Oil Marketing Department, COMD of the NNPC, from where he rose to the position of Head and later Manager of Production Contract Management of Crude Oil Marketing Department, COMD, between 2007 and 2014. He was appointed General Manager, Oil Stock Management, COMD, where he worked till 2015 before being appointed Group General Manager, COMD, and later Nigeria's National Representative at OPEC on the 13th of May, 2018. He was later appointed Group General Manager Crude Oil Marketing while also doubling as the country's national representative at OPEC. His elevation as the 19th Group Managing Director of the 46-year-old corporation represents a remarkable turning point for the organization. I grew up in this company. Uh, as a young man, I saw the potentials in this company. Uh, I was a very privileged worker of this company in the sense that uh, I had early responsibilities uh, beyond my pay grade. And as I was growing, I knew that this company can be a very, very massive uh, a place of uh, creating value for our country and for our communities. And uh, as I saw the opportunities come, and when I was appointed the group chief executive of uh, of the company, uh, even before then, when I was appointed the group managing director of the different NNPC, uh, I knew with all the constraints, with all the governance issues that are associated with this very uh, nature of the company, uh, of the corporation itself, that I knew that it is possible to make a difference. And, and many of the things we did are very simple uh, and easy to follow. First, uh, in a company, uh, you must be more efficient, you must uh, produce more at the least cost that is practical. Within days of his appointment, he unveiled his roadmap to global excellence for the NNPC, which was anchored on the TAPE agenda. TAPE, which is an acronym for Transparency, Accountability and Performance Excellence, was an indication of the policy direction of the Kiari led administration at the corporation. We understand uh, the shareholder uh, skepticism about our company, and we have a very long past, uh, which may not be very uh, pleasant, but we also know that they are all bordering around how transparent is this company to its shareholders, how accountable are we to our shareholders. Are we performing in an excellent manner? And those doubts uh, must be cleared uh, through uh, deliberate steps. And that is why we took the TEP agenda, which is that will be transparent to our shareholders, will be accountable to them, and this company will perform in the most excellent form that any company should, should, should approach. And this is also best practice. You, know, you really don't have a choice. You know, if you become flexible about transparency, mm. you say you don't want to be transparent, mm. or you don't want to be accountable, and you know, definitely the value of the company will collapse. The company cannot deliver its value. So it's really not an option. It's not a matter of rigidity. It is something that must be done. And that's how companies are measured, and that's companies are valued. And we want us to understand today that you know, those uh, steps that we took has brought respect to our company not just locally but internationally. Our partners, our financiers see this as a value that we have created. They also see that you know, by being uh, transparent, even in their financial statement, by the way, uh, everybody is aware that you know, NMPC has not been publishing its financial statements you know, since creation. Uh, and by being this, we are simply telling people that yes, we do make mistakes. Uh, our performance may not be excellent, but we are ready to have uh, input of the public and of other shareholders and people know what we are doing today so it's really not a matter of rigidity it's really something that must be done and bending it means not doing the right thing for everybody that is on the contract or people that are the buyers of nmpc crude or uh, opticals of petroleum products there's no need for you to lobby there's no need for you to go and seek for assistance of someone because you automated everything Automation from the crude lifting, automation from the product 
supply aspect of it. So you know that if you are on the contract, you can predict when you are most likely to load. So there's no issue of you loving or, or, or doing this thing. And another thing that he has done that I can tell you is that you know corruption comes when there are opportunities for people to undervalue whatever the asset of the government. One thing that Melek area has done, which most marketers may not feel comfortable with it, is that he ensure that government get the best value for their product, government get the best value for their for their crude, and at the same time too, you that you are buying the product, you have to struggle. So there is no opportunity for you to see anybody to see. Oh, let me meet this person if he can assist me to do this. So he has created additional value for government by making sure that the valuation for everything that is done in NNPC is in the best way. He gave equal opportunity to Nigeria and multinational companies. We bidded alongside the companies like Totsa, BP, Shell. We have participated in many NAPC tenders. And because we know if we bid, we win, we are given the opportunity to perform. He gave us the boldness and he also gave us the morale for us to do more. And for us to compete with the likes of BP here, we were able to go to other countries and do business and compete on international standards. And I think this is one of the best things.